Hey everyone, welcome back to another exciting episode of Attack of Productions. Today I bank our joins again by Jimmy and Jake. No. Oh, okay, I accidentally cut Jimmy off for once. <laughs> I knew you were going to cut me off, that's why I said no. <laughs> Damn. It, it's always fun when I have you two on, on uh, this platform, whatever you want to call it. Today's matchup. I think the platform's YouTube. Is it? Or is this one going on OnlyFans? I think this is going to OnlyFans. It has been 30 uh, seconds. Oh, no, we might have just got demonetized for that. Um, today, just bleep it. <laughs> I don't get any of the money anyway. <laughs> I buy you guys sushi once a year. Once a year? Yeah, I guess you're right. I want my sushi January 1st. Oh, you're throwing a hard bargain out there. Today's matchup is me versus Chase. Uh, Chase could join us today, so I got these two guys because Jimmy's helped build... Um, both Chase's decks, because Chase has played Turtle School and he's playing Ape Q, and Jake definitely has hands-on experience with Ape Q. Yeah, I've, resident yellow player, I've played a lot of uh, Ape Q and pretty much every yellow deck in the format right now. Is that always fun to take part one of your decks to take the piece out for another deck? No, I'm considering ordering more like two more robotic reposts so i have six and then i can have three in two, de- in I, two decks i've actually you know thought what about the that. easiest way to do it is just like buy a thousand white dragon shields and just leave everything in the same de- in the same sleeve it's easy peasy right there yeah, that's why i yeah. bought a bunch of yellow sleeves for that purpose right there um yeah i thought about buying actually extra red shit just like i have prison always built even though i never play prison anymore just to have it there because right now Fluff has all the uh, red cards, but let's uh let's get in today's matchup. There's buttons up below. Feel free to click there for a reason. I guess we've had APQ on. This is the first time Turtle School's been on, on the channel, so I'll kind of go over it real quick. It spams one drops, which draw you cards. Fantastic. In order to spam cards, you put cards in the bottom of your deck. Most times, it's literally just the card I'm going to play. I put it by my deck. Um, the leader. Gets its benefits only on the Unawakened when you attack leader or unison. So you can't attack battle cards, which is kind of what the deck's engine is off of, killing battle cards. But once you awaken, you um, he hits a Goku, he's Yamcha, he's a Krillin, so he gets a lot of cool benefits from other card effects. And he combos from the drops, which helps keep the engine going. If you put that into your Z energy for future purposes, because the Awakened side has an activate battle, which pops your field card to boost your leader and give it double strike. So absolutely fantastic. Um, a lot of people have seen the Goku Piccolo engine be used a lot. It's kind of what this deck goes off of because the Goku is searchable in this deck. Unfortunately, the Piccolo is not. So you have to just draw that Piccolo. I do want to say you a bitch for uh, attacking his unison like that. That's Look, mean. You put That's that, dirty. So he put the um, so he put the unison out and he, he even said, I feel bad doing this. I'm like, okay. And now I'm like, it's 1K. Swing, swing, swing. <laughs> and him not having um, a Yamcha, a Yamcha at the very beginning, mm. and seeing where he's at, I'm like, I'm not gonna let him benefit resources. I'm just since he gave me an opportunity to attack into his unison, I'm not gonna give him life. I'm gonna keep his hand small and just focus where I need to focus it on. Also because I wanted to combo off a Roshi, I mean a, a, a Krillin, but since he tapped them all, I couldn't do that. Uh, I do want to say this is, uh, I think this is like his third time playing this deck. We were uh, putting it together for him um, but before our shop tournament. Uh, so this is a kind of like a half-powered version of the deck. It doesn't have a lot of like the meta uh, tech pieces. Uh, this is pretty much this is pretty much just two starter decks slammed together, and he borrowed a couple things like Robotic Repost and... Uh, um, a, a couple other cards from me uh, just to make the deck actually playable against uh, our, our locals. Um, so this is not a um, 100% powered version of this, and this is also a newer player. So if you notice any mistakes uh, in sequencing or gameplay on that side, it's due to that reason. I don't, um, I don't if, recall many mistakes, but that's why I got Jake here as well, because Jake has played this deck. I haven't seen anything so far. From here, he's got a couple of options. The thing that's interesting about um, this matchup is that he'll actually get to switch your field to rest mode, if I'm not mistaken, since it is in your battle area. 
And that'll trigger things like Bergamo and Poutine that are usually like kind of difficult to trigger in Ape Coup, considering your opponent is playing correctly. So I'm interested to see where that leads. And I think it's important for him to focus the unison here because of things like Charismatic Villain and the fact that once he evolves his Kid Coups into Apes, they lose Barrier. So uh, they're all really susceptible to Green's easy KOs. So I think he's better off leaving them small and benefiting from the uh, dual attack and then maybe evolving once he's got that unison down. He uh, he did go for the leader. Um, and I I was actually expecting him to evolve because that Goku does reduce the cost so he could evolve into the 5-drop if he wanted to. But he's playing Turtle School. Like, so he knows what I can do. So he was smart to hold off on and hang on to the energy for something else. Yeah, before this, um, before this game, when uh, when I told him that he was playing against you, and then he learned that you were playing Turtle School, he was like, "If I lose to my own damn deck, we mean his own damn deck. Uh, he used my build initially." <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> this the, Turtle School is his main deck um, going into this format. He's he's a returning player. Uh, he played back in like the set three draft box two days, um, and uh, has kind of dabbled in between, but he, this is his first time back proper to the game. Yeah. Uh, so turtle school was his main deck. And he was like, he's like, if I lose to this damn deck, I'm going to be so upset. Uh, Cause he knows this deck, this deck inside and out. Yeah. This is one of the decks um, that I got a chance to practice the most with before, before it came down. Cause I was like super ready for this deck. And when we sat down, he actually asked, so what changes have you made so far? I'm like, uh, I've made a few changes. We'll go over afterwards. <laughs> So I didn't want to like give it away, like what to expect. This is interesting interaction. He can evolve on top of that Goku. Yeah, he can. Can he? It, like, it doesn't like, specify a yellow Goku. It, it says does Goku not. Childhood, right? Yeah. Son Goku Childhood, if I'm not mistaken. I was like, oh, oh, great. I damn, I gave him the Goku because Goku's a top three searcher, and I th- think that's a misplay on my part because uh, it's bottom three cards and i think i just shuffled that and i told him the entire game i was like man the goku and yamcha always confused me i always forget which one's which for some reason and i just no i, I shuffled because the, the activate me that's why i shuffled okay never mind but yeah so he starts protecting the goku and i'm like uh okay <laughs> god that is, that is such a that's such a fun interaction yeah I I, lo- I love these like subtle interactions in uh, in this game like that, uh, and yeah. you only see it with these kind of like uh, Ape Coup is a little bit more meta, but you kind of see it in these like weird off meta matchups, uh, especially when there's a gimmick like giving your opponent a battle card. Yeah, um, this, like despite all of like the the negativity that uh, Zenkai has kind of gotten so far. I, I stand by our assessment like before the set came out that the flavor of this set is really, really good. Possibly the best flavor in a set ever. And I think the fact that those Goku childhoods can evolve into apes, although it's kind of weird because like that is after he lost his tail, right? So like that's just a tiny flavor fail there, but otherwise this, this set has just been great flavor-wise. Yeah. I, I, I'm... This has been my favorite set in a long time. Uh, I think even with red being a problem, uh, I'm saying that with quotes, uh, which is which in some cases, in some ways, I do think red is a massive problem right now. Uh, but uh, with, with uh, also poutine, just busted ass card. Um, it, it doesn't hurt me as much in this matchup because I can just use the field card to play a card and tap it immediately. And also, of course. to clarify, the reason why I gave him a Goku to start with is that I had the intention of uh, playing a three drop Krillin or five drop Krillin because I'd have three energy for that effect. And mm-hmm. when he played Nimbus, I was like, eh, I'm not going to worry about it. But mm-hmm. I didn't think about time. I could have used, I, I'm, I left my, I passed the turn with three open energy because I had nothing in my hand to play. And I remember saying, shit, I could have just played a card from the Z deck. I could have played the Frieza for a future turn. It has double strike. You know, it's prepping. Um, Yeah, he would tap it and possibly try to kill it, knowing that it's a hand control and he's running low on cards because I'm not really attacking his leader. Mm -hmm. Um, I could have played the... uh, I could have spent three if I wanted to, but that was a risk I didn't really want to spend three. 
but then it, it, it turned out okay because I hadn't happened to get the uh, the clone token. So, mm-hmm. which it's kind of been interesting to see, kind of the uh, revival of these uh, token negates. Um, with yellow kind of being out of the meta and stuff like the Piccolo Jr. Uh, not being as prevalent, um, these token negates have kind of become pretty much the staple negate, at least for me. Like, I find myself running more of them than I do, like, the classic stuff, like, uh, you know, After Image. Uh, Shocking Death Ball is not really uh, relevant. Um, but... Uh, this is one of the few matchups where the token negates are not as good because of cards like Poutine. Yeah, I, I think they kind of like go in and out depending on how the meta is looking. And I think they synergize with the new leaders so well because of Z Awakening requiring you to be at three life. It's just a good way to be able to take damage while still... Uh, providing some kind of extra layer of defense. And as, especially the uh, uh, homicidal clones and the testing the opposition where the tokens have combo power. So if your opponent just stops attacking, you can uh, turn around and use them on your turn. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and just for clarification, um, I was comboing after he took care of the uni- uni- unison because he's like, oh, I'll just take off board. I'm like, yeah, so I'm still going to combo real quick. Hang on. Because <laughs> I want to get my Z ready. Having so Jay kind of saw um my new takes on my counterplays and stuff where I, I run the the death dark ball, whatever is the freezer one for blue and then focus breakthrough for other decks. And I have I happen to use the uh the dark death dark ball on the mecha just so I could get those swings in against his unison. Mm-hmm. Just a really underrated negate and uh or not really negate, but counterplay, and one that I think unison-based green decks should take a second look at. I mean, it's been out forever, and people just haven't really utilized it much. I want it to go into the Goku Pickle Chain this turn, but I didn't want to discard any cards in my hand to play that counterplay. So I just kind of spend the energy, went ahead and pass. His hand at this point was getting pretty low, so I felt super comfortable. And we talked about this. It should tap the field card. I just, at some point, we just forget doing it. Mm. It doesn't uh, It doesn't mean as much, but yes, it should be tapped every time he swings. And here, I'm explaining that he doesn't get the draw because the Goku wasn't tapped. So mm. the strategy there is to swing the Goku, then evolve it, then swing the leader to tap the Yamcha to re-sand the Goku. I wonder if that Yamcha is just a little bit too restrictive. Um, I think it would have been fine to draw the extra card as long as you restood a Goku. I don't think it really had to be a, a great I, I'm game. convinced that every time I read this Yamcha, somebody at like Bandai is like beaming more restrictions <laughs> onto this card. Because I'm at, I'm like at first like, oh, you have to untap to draw. Okay, that's interesting. It has to be a Goku. Okay, uh, but it also has to be a card that hasn't t- attacked yet. Like, what the fuck? Like, I, I, think, I, I do agree with you, Jake. I think the thought process there was that the leader draws naturally regardless, right? Yeah. Do you draw or search for an ape? So you're getting a draw regardless of the leader. The Yamcha is just an, an additional draw if you meet its requirements, which seems fair to me. I do under, I do agree that a lot of times, well, if he had the Bulma on board, then the Goku has a reason to swing because it's a 15k, but you have to worry about using your resources from your hand. But where it's a 10k, he just chose not to swing with it because it didn't make sense because his hand's getting so low. And he just swings the leader in Goku pretty much and just passes with three open energy. And I think he has like four cards in his hand. I'm like, okay, cool. Then I'm just going to do what I can, get some free plays out of the way. Yeah, kind of a kind of a rough spot. Um, that's one thing I've found that uh, some of the other yellow decks like Trunks Vegeta or Bardock have over this uh, Goku ape is... As the game goes on with this ape, you kind of like lose quite a bit of hand size. 
And I've even seen some players taking in the uh, Great Ape Goku Saiyan instincts because you can search it off the leader's ability and then they just immediately combo it off and tap two to draw two. Yeah, it's not a bad play. I think I think on the world champ is also like kind of a substitute for that. Um, but it does have the the requirement of you having um, a Goku childhood in play to get the draw two. Yeah, I think at that point it's personal preference and how many mm-hmm. copies of Repost are you running and like what what's your extra card lineup outside of you know your negates and stuff like that. Of course. And, and just to point out real quick, I. If you're correct, I did miss the draw on the leader swing. He negated it, and I just completely didn't do any of the autos. But because I didn't do the autos, it allowed me to um, overrun just fine because I only had six cards in my drop. And I think intentionally, if he didn't negate, um, I probably would have come with a card out just to put the Yamcha in my drop. And then I'm like, oh, crap, I'm going to have to make an extra swing to get um, a card in my drop. Yeah, I've really liked this Broly. We've kind of needed something to replace Secret ID, especially since the token negates are so popular right now. And uh, I think this Broly is designed really well to kind of replace Secret ID. Yes, I agree with that. You can't really spread the warping out and like suck up an entire board of battle cards anymore, but... Um, being able to get around the one blocker that you need to get around is is just fine. So I swing with the the token, get, get him to use more resources and go to play Goku, and he just had this ready, so he's able to tap the uh, my card down. Luckily enough for me is that Goku's auto, I mean, it's an auto, so I get my effect as well, so I'm able to pop his blocker for one more attack. And I will end up paying one for the Piccolo. And it, it, Yikes, what's he at? Four, three life here? Four he, life? He, he two life with five cards in hand. So I swing, oh. he discards a card, and I start comboing. And I kind of do the super combo for a token, and I immediately just combo the token off to just give it extra, an extra bump. I start coming up, and he's like, it's single strike, you know that, right? And I'm like, yeah, double strike. Yeah, I'll just put a <laughs> chomp on it. So, old Champa. and I kind of go over him like the cards I had. Like for for a matchup like this, where it can get so barrier heavy, I chose to side in the Vegeta uh, units as, as my backup play. Didn't really need him though in this matchup. Yeah, I think that's solid overall. So, with that being said, thank you for tuning in. Keep mind this button down below. Feel free to click the for a reason. Jake, will you lead us out? Uh, yeah, another interesting matchup. It's always cool to see some of the decks outside of like the, the top three or four that are floating around. Uh, remember to read your cards, know your plays, let us make the mistakes so that you don't have to, and fluff out.